Hey everybody and welcome back to 7 Minute AE Tutorials. This is part 2 in a 2 part series, so make sure to check out the previous tutorial. Today we'll be creating custom effects on adjustment layers as well as using the roto brush, text animators, motion tile, and adding an expression to get a camera shake. I'm also going to show you a cool trick using the track mode stencil alpha. Please subscribe and click the bell for notifications, support our channel by signing up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, and check out our 7 Minute AE merch store as well as our affiliates, Envato Elements and AE. Juice. All links and info are in the description below. If you have questions, leave me a message in the comments. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. I need to put our guy in front of our text. So let's take this skydiving MOV here and just duplicate that. And now make sure that you remove this alpha mat from your track mode and put it on top of everything. So now we just need to trim this over to where our text begins. Let's go down to the end of this comp at 10 seconds and just make sure you trim this. Whenever we freeze the roto brush, it will freeze everything on the layer and we want to limit it so that way it doesn't eat up too much RAM and take too long. Select your roto brush here and make sure you have the roto brush tool, not the refine edge tool. Double click on the layer you want to use the roto brush on. Make sure you're at the beginning of the layer because it will start to paint the roto brush wherever your playhead is. Zoom in over here and make sure you have your quality set to full. That's very important. Okay, so now you get this circle. Whenever you see green, that's what you're selecting that you want to be painted out. And actually, let's move this over so that way I can see what I'm doing better. And if you hold down Command or Control, you can actually change the size of your auto brush like this. So I'm just going to paint all this stuff out and this should grab pretty easily. It's a little bit smaller. I'm going to grab his arm. If you hold down Option or Alt, you get this red circle. You can use that to get rid of the areas that you don't want painted. Depending on the amount of contrast between your subject and the background, this may pop out very easily the way it is for me, or it may take a little bit more finesse. Okay, so now if we start to scrub through here, we can track along with our rotor brush progress as well as our footage over here. So you want to kind of just go through here and make sure that your roto brush is sticking to your subject. Shift page down to go for 10 frames and just kind of check like every 10 frames because your roto brush can pop off of your subject. You can always go back and tweak the settings if you need to finesse it a little bit. And now one thing that's really important is that you select this freeze option. This will lock all of your settings for your roto brush. Okay, and then I want to do an animation to animate this off. So make sure you don't have any layer selected and then double click your rectangle tool again to bring up another shape layer. Go to about the nine second mark and hit your left bracket to bring the beginning of that over. Open up our rectangle path settings. Again, I'm going to get rid of the stroke. Put a keyframe at the beginning of your animation and shift page down twice to go for 20 frames. Put another keyframe. Now let's just make this 1080 value zero. Right click on this first keyframe and we're going to go to keyframe assistant, easy ease out, go to our graph editor, and now this time let's pull this first set of handles over to the right. So that way it's going to start fast and then it's going to go slow. Close this up a little bit so we can see what we're doing better. Now let's change the mode on this shape layer to stencil alpha. Turn on our transparency, we can see that as this closes up, it makes everything underneath it transparent, which is exactly what we want to do. We can start to have some fun with some of the color correction and some of the settings. So I'm going to bring in, I've got this footage, it's this damaged film reel footage. I'm going to put that right underneath our shape layer here. Now let's go up to effect, channel, invert. And now let's set the mode to screen and bring up our opacity and maybe bring that down to about 50%. And now I'm going to bring up S for scale and actually increase this so we can't see the edges on that. And I'm going to do some color corrections. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm just going to call this CC for color correction. Let's go to effect and color correction. We're going to add in a tint, effect, color correction, add in a curves. Now let's set our tint to maybe 30%. I'm just going to punch up the contrast, punch up the, uh, the brightness here, layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this main blur, go to effect. Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur. We want to repeat edge pixels and set this to about seven. With Main Blur selected, let's go to our Shape Layer Creation tool and get the Ellipse tool and then double click that. Set our mask to subtract. Open up our mask settings and let's just change our feather to say maybe 250. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to bring in my handles here so that way our edges are really blurred out and it kind of seeps in like that. I'm going to set in another adjustment layer. I'm going to call this one Vignette. And I'm just going to go over to my effects and presets and type in Vignette and just use After Effects' CC Vignette. And I'm going to change the amount to 150 and the angle 50. Let's add in an adjustment layer. I'm going to name this Offset. Then I'll go to our effects and presets, type in offset and just double click that to add the offset. So go to about a second and 10 frames and hit your left bracket to bring that over and then shift page down once to go for 10 frames, alt right bracket, put a keyframe for our shift to center, hit U to bring up our keyframes, O to go to the end of this layer. We want to make this have two rotations, 540 plus 1080 plus 1080. Uh, you can do the math right in After Effects and it will give the value for you. And so you can kind of play with these keyframes to get the right look that you want. Now I'm going to add in another adjustment layer, left bracket to bring over your endpoint, shift page down to go for 10 frames, and then alt right bracket to close that off. Go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, and we want to repeat edge pixels. And let's set this to about 15 pixels. So let's bring this over. You can just kind of put these like little blips of blur in there to kind of make it look like it's a filming mistake or maybe something went out of focus for a second. I may make it a little bit shorter. So this is all personal preference. There's like no set amount. I'm going to duplicate that layer, maybe bring one to the beginning, make this maybe a little bit longer, but like really blur this one out. So I'm going to set the, the blur radius to maybe like 25. See, maybe I may put this blur after the offset. And now again, this is all personal preference. You can tweak this and get the exact look that you want. So make sure you take off the locks off of any of layer that you may have locked down. Command or Control A to select everything, and then let's go to Layer, Pre-Compose, and let's just call this Main. Hit OK. And the reason why I wanted to pre-comp this, if you go to the very end, remember we have that stencil alpha. Well, it makes everything underneath it transparent. So this is a trick that you can do if you want to use a stencil or silhouette alpha, pre-comp that animation, and then I'm going to bring in a white solid. So now that way we have this white background. Let's go up to Effects and Presets, type in Motion, tile and with main selected double click motion tile and we want to mirror the edges and make this 150 on the width and the height select p for position alt click on position and we'll type wiggle five comma six we get a little bit of a camera shake but we also don't lose the edges of our pre-comp because of the motion tile so in the last two tutorials, we created some cool animations using text animators. You learn how to use a shape layer as a mat in order to animate in some footage. We used alpha mat to put footage inside of text. We used a roto brush to put a subject in front of a text layer. And then we went over adding in some color correction, blur, vignette, and a scratchy film overlay. We also went over how to pre-comp footage, add a motion tile, and a position wiggle to give your animation a handheld camera feel. You can use these shortcuts in a variety of ways, and I highly recommend you experiment with adding in effects using adjustment layers. You'll be amazed how much better your animations will look with just a little bit of polish. I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful. Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-Minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.